Good morning, you guys. So I'm here to give you what God gave me this morning. So when I woke up, the scripture um, was in my mind and it says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. So I opened my Bible and I'm just like, God, what you, you know, what do you want to say to me? Um, and I opened up my Bible and it opened up to Job 20. And I'm going to start from verse 4. Surely you know how it has been from, from of old, ever since mankind was placed on the earth, that the mirth of the wicked is brief. The joy of the godless lasts but a moment. Though the pride of the godless person reaches to the heavens and his head touches the clouds, he will perish forever like his own dung. Those who have seen him will say, where is he? Like a dream he flies away, no more to be found, banished like a vision of the night. The eye that saw him will, know, will not see him again. His place will look on no more. His children must make amends to the poor. His own hands must give back his wealth. The youthful vigor that fills his bones will lie with him in the dust. Though evil is sweet in his mouth and he hides it under his tongue, though he cannot bear to let it go and, it, and let it linger in his mouth, yet his food will turn sour in his stomach. It will become the venom of serpents within him. He will spit out the riches he swallowed. God will make his stomach vomit them up. He will suck the poison of serpents. The fangs of an adder will kill him. He will not enjoy the streams, the rivers flowing with honey and cream. What he toiled for, he must give back uneaten. He will not enjoy the profit from his trading. For he has oppressed the poor and left them destitute. He has seized houses that he did not build. Surely he will have no respite from his craving. He cannot save himself by his treasure. Nothing is left for him to devour. His prosperity will not endure. In the midst of his plenty, distress will take over him. The full force of misery will come upon him. When he has filled his belly, God will vent his burning anger against him and rain down his blows on him. Though he flees from an iron weapon, a bronze-tipped arrow pierces him. He pulls it out of his back, the gleaming point of, uh, out of his liver. Terror will come over him. Total darkness lies in what waits his treasure. A fire unfanned will consume him and devour what is left in his tent. The heavens will expose his guilt. The earth will rise up against him. A flood will carry off his house, rushing waters on the day of God's wrath. Such is the fate God allots the wicked, the heritage appointed for them by God. Again, that was Job 20. And I started it at verse 4, ended it at verse 29. So a few things um, leaped out at me. The first is the verse 15 where it says, He will spit out the riches he swallowed. God will make his stomach vomit them up. So first, uh, I mean, it's it's repeated in this. The theme of this is repeated. Like There may be people in your life. There may be people who have, you know, betrayed you or done you wrong there may be people who just operated outside of the will of God and like God said be not deceived God is not mocked what a man sows they will reap right so they will reap not only the evil that they've done or the wrong that they've done but everything that they built up is not going to last. Everything they worked so hard for um, or w did whatever they did to acquire this, uh, the riches that they swallowed, God is going to make them vomit these things up. These things that, that, they, that has, they profited off of, they will not be able to enjoy the profits. Um, the houses that they, that they build will be seized. Um, from them they cannot save themselves from the treasures that they've stored up um they cannot save themselves from god's wrath um again this is the harvest of scripture says 
verse 29, such is the fate God allots the wicked, the heritage appointed for them by God. So when you have a heritage or you inherit something or there's a fate, okay, awaiting you, this is what God is saying. That for the wicked, this is what this is what they will endure. Um, fires will consume them, and and will devour what's left of what God already destroyed. Okay, um, it's just a p repeat over and over and over. Um, in the midst of the plenty that they have, the distress will overtake them. Um, they I already said that they cannot save themselves. But even scripture says when he has filled his belly, God will vent his burning anger against them. So people are going to reach a point of success that they may acquire, that they may achieve. But scripture here says again, it's not long lasting. Their joy is not long lasting. Okay. Um, especially just think of the fact that Anything outside of God is temporary, right? Um, so that, that goes without saying, you know, nothing is going to withstand or endure or last as long as God and the will of God and the things of God. So that's already, that's already law. But what God is saying, like, not only is it, only is it going to last, but there's a, there's a wrath coming. Okay. There's a judgment coming. There is a um, a harvest coming for the seeds that's been planted. Okay, no one escapes the the judgment and the wrath of God, especially no one that has uh, not yet repented. Um, and sometimes it takes this for people to repent. Um, and so, I released the word before about remaining blameless. Stay blameless. And, and all that you do and don't rejoice at this time for, for, for this wrath coming upon people. It may be happening to them now. It may, it may have happened already. And for those that are not in those categories, it's coming. Because again, be not deceived. God is not mocked. But when I read the uh, verse of verse 16, it said God will make his stomach vomit them up. God brought back to me a dream that he gave me and it was May 6th of I believe 2021 let me look at my notes yeah May 6th of 2021 and I had a dream I'm not gonna go in details with the dream but in the in the dream I just started vom like vomiting like it was it, it was chunks of, 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 not to be gross, but just chunks of whatever I had consumed. And in my notes here, it says if it was so real that I woke up with my mouth filled with saliva and I could literally feel the chunks coming up out of my throat. If I had slept a millisecond longer, I probably would have literally like threw up a little bit <laughs> in real life. Um, because that's how intense I felt on um, the dream. And so I just remember like in, in the script in the notes right now and even now I remember that when it was happening, I knew it wasn't me. I knew it wasn't about me. Um, but I couldn't understand what what I, what was happening while I was while I was vomiting. And towards the end of my notes, it says, when I woke up, I, I immediately, I was like, what is that about? And Holy Spirit was like, this is how they are going to throw up all the words they spoke against you. And then it also came to, to my remembrance, um, something the prophet revealed to me probably a few years ago about even my God ordained spouse, um, having word vomit, like, having to recant um all of the 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 words that were spoke against me all of the lies all of the um things that i probably don't even know that they said you know behind my back or whatever like they're just gonna have to 
eat their words. And after eating their words, they're gonna have to they're gonna have to regurgitate what they've spoke over you or against you. This includes, you know, a God ordained spouse, this includes counterfeits, this includes, you know, enemies, friends, family that you think, you know, um, speak well of you. This is the season where not only are people gonna um have to reap what they sow, but even the words they spoke against you. I mean, you ever you have or hear the people say, you know, the 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 quote, eat your words or uh, eat your heart out or whatever. Like you're gonna, they're gonna have to eat the words that they spoke by witnessing the glory of God over your life. And even after doing that, it's gonna come a word vomit where not only are they apologetic, but it's like it's gonna be um, a, a recant. Um, like a reversal of what they spoke over you. So just think of when you eat something really sour, like you can't even, something that doesn't feel right is either going to come out the other way or it's going to come out, you know, out of your mouth. And scripture says here, the evil is sweet in his mouth and it hides under his tongue. Though he cannot bear to let it go, and it lingers in his mouth, yet his food will turn sour in his stomach. It will become like venom of the serpents within him, and he will spit the riches out that he swallowed. God will make his stomach vomit them up. So again, there is no, there is no peace, no permanent peace, no permanent joy um, for people operating outside of the will of God for people actually speaking against God's people. Scripture says, um, uh, touch not my anointing, do my prophets no harm. That isn't just for physically touching someone. Um, that isn't for physically doing harm to someone. That's even speaking against God's people. Okay. That's even speaking. That's even like trying to orchestrate things to to arrange for the downfall of God's people um, or to take from God's people. Like all of that it is included in the touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Okay. It don't mean you got to physically put your finger on someone. Just speaking against God's people. You're going to pay for that. They're going to have to pay for that. Okay. Um, so yeah, I hope that this, uh, speaks to you in what the way it needs to, but scripture says again, surely, you know, it has been from of old ever since mankind was placed on this earth. This is law. This is the formula that God has already said. A plus B is going to lead to C one plus two is three. This is the equation. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever he, a man sows that, he will also reap. If you sow a plant, you're going to reap a plant. If you sow a flower, you're going to reap a flower. If you sow discord, you're going to reap discord. If you sow destruction, you're going to reap destruction. If you sow good things, you'll reap good things. And it may not be in the exact place you planted, but we all reap the harvest that we that has been, that we've planted the seeds that we've sown that's law but for the wicked they don't get to just reap what they planted they have to give up scripture says the enemy has to bring back what he stole okay houses they not did not build okay and in fact it's the opposite for God's people we will we will receive stuff we did not build houses we not we did not build fortunes we did not store up fruits we did not plant we we the scripture says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous so while the people outside of god's will that your enemies they have to give back what they've sown they have to give back the riches and the wealth that they've gotten it's not lasting it's fleeing from them okay and they're gonna endure the wrath and the judgment that, that is coming to them. 
On the other hand, God's people, the meek, the blameless, the righteous, will not be forsaken, nor his seed will be begging bread. Those people, like, we will inherit even the things that the riches that were that there were supposed to be for the for the for the entities for the wicked. Scripture says the wicked, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. So you got people working hard, working hard, working hard to acquire these things. And little do they know, they're going to have to hand it over to you. So go ahead. Like, let people build up someone for you because they're, they, that's your God or your spouse. Let someone build a house that you're ultimately going to sign the deed and, and receive. Okay, let someone buy a car that they're going to hand over to you. You don't have to worry about a thing because you're on the right side of, of God. Okay, and that's my word this morning. Harvest is coming. And from, for most cases, the judgment of these people ends up being our harvest. And I'll release a dream on that. And the word on that. Happy Sunday.